Welcome everyone, here we go. This is going to be game two of this best out of three series taken from DreamHack Summer 2011. Again, a clash between these two epic European players, both of them tremendous Eastern Europe forces. And uh, well, we're going to have spawning on this bottom right position here on Kervas, MTW Demaga, member of Team Mortal Teamwork, Ukrainian player, one of the finest Zerg players currently playing this game, in my modest opinion. And he's going to be facing again the Red Terran spawning on the top left position who is Bratok from Team Rock's Kiss, Russian Terran player and well they're going to be duking it out here for our delight and me and Sebastian will be covering this game once more. Sebastian doing fine ready for this one? Indeed uh, I am very happy to be give this uh, match the uh, Hydrastian <laughs> touch because yeah. uh, uh, Dimaga and Bratok are true heroes of mine and uh, they can really bring the house down and bring the awesomeness up when it comes to StarCraft 2. This was of course taken from the DreamHack Summer 2011, the uh, qualifying stages and even though I was there I missed this game and I'm so happy to be here casting it with you and just seeing this uh, beautiful strategic maneuvers unfolding in front of our eyes. This is of course GSL Crevasse, a very, very big map, and that lends itself to the macro games that we all love and see. It's simply because of the distance and all the resources on the map, we get to see players uh, uh, go further into the game more often, and uh, they uh, have the opportunity and the capacity to really do whatever they want. Uh, right now, Bratok is walling off his uh, ramp, whereas Demaga goes for uh, his first expansion at the uh, safe expansion which yeah. has fewer mineral fields but on this version of the map a rich Vespian geyser from where you harvest uh, six pieces of gas uh, instead of four every time exactly. and uh, what do you think uh, the manga has up its sleeve considering what we saw last game well, um, everyone's seen the previous match it was a very fast blow by uh, Bratok he just went there and completely smashed the Maga in and now the Maga feels the responsibility, he's feeling the weight on his shoulders. He needs to win this game or this series will be over. This is a very big map, as you mentioned. Uh, we do see that the Maga went for that hatch first on the back of his base, on this well-protected base. Keep in mind that due to the player's positioning, it's actually not as well-protected as it could be. We might be witnessing some drops going on here from Bratok straight into this uh, uh, natural expo hidden on the back of the main base from the Maga. It's quite favorable, that positioning there on the back. But um, still, we do uh, see the Maga expanding and going for a bit of economy game. Also, this rich Vespin geyser here on the back is very important. I already seen several players going straight and grab that one instead of picking up any of the other uh, two that are available on your main base. And the Mag is going the exact same way, doing the exact same thing. An SCV from Bratok is just taking a sneak peek here. He won't be living for much longer, as you might imagine. The Zerglings are finally out. And being the map this big, it might be beneficial for the Maga. He will be able to notice when his opponent's going to start pushing or moving towards his way, as long as he keeps his scouting rolling, of course. Indeed. And uh, it has it remains to be seen exactly what these players will uh, yeah. do next. But uh, they're both uh, going for a quick economy since uh, it's fairly safe mm -hmm. to do so behind that wall in on the ramp. We see now how uh, Bratok uh, rather... Yes, Bratok is following up on Demaga's early economy attempts by an expansion of his own while building two barracks. But uh, dwelling a little bit on that uh, rich Vespian geyser and the safe-ish uh, back uh, expansion, mm -hmm. uh, I spoke somewhat with pro gamers at DreamHack uh, when we were watching games here on uh, Crevasse, whether uh, they felt that uh, the rich Vespian geyser where you can harvest more gas quickly yeah. in the early yeah. game if that uh, really has impacted their builds as they tailor builds to this map. And they said that uh, not really. Now I see two Marines shooting down on an Overlord, and I do think they will get at least one Overlord killed here. So that's first blood for Bratos. Yeah. Uh, even though he has three Queens moving out, so they will exchange that blood for some of uh, Bratox. But uh, they... Well, they didn't say it quite outrightly so, but clearly uh, they felt, and I'm talking about Tyler and uh -huh. Huck here, that uh, they had not really found a way of making full use of the fact that you can get more gas in the early game quicker with this setup. And I feel 
such things as StarCraft 2 continues to develop will be uh, very important. People who can use that extra research intake will be very powerful. However, we see uh, Banshee Cloak oh, being yeah. upgraded and Banshee on the way for Bratov, whereas an infestation pit is just now finishing and the MAGA taking a third I'm base. not sure exactly what the MAGA's plan is, but it seems like this build is exactly the same one he did before on the previous match, remember? He's yes. basically teching up quite quickly, going for infestors once more. There it is, the pathogen glands rolling. And uh, apparently he's just trusting that the map is big enough for him to have time to this time get some infestors out and try to control Bratox moves. Inside Bratox base we do see there's the barracks, also the factory with that reactor attached and he's putting out a lot of Hellions once more. But he's gonna back up the Hellion harass with Banshee harass apparently and seems like he's gonna be committed to this Banshee play for a little while or else he wouldn't be investing on a cloaking field. So um, not sure exactly how this is gonna work. What I do know is that those uh, fungal growths by the, the infestors will work on cloak Banshee so he might be able to hold them and pin them down and just shoot them until they uh, in the moment they lose off all of their energy, as you might imagine. Uh, Indeed, but we have six Hellions, uh, at least three of them, yep. roasting this building hatchery, and uh, Dimaga has a bunch of Zerglings, but he is scared to use them. Uh, this could be, uh, again, similar to last game, Hydra, where uh, uh, Bratov just managed to stomp Dimaga, but of course this is a much wider map, much longer supply route, and uh, now we see the Hellions momentarily backing off. It's a game of back and forth, and now we got Infestus with Fungal Growth out, and as you you said they can be used against Banshees, they can pin Hellions down very easily. Yeah, and we do see that the reaction by the Maga, this Banshee just showed up on his main base, he's starting to get some Spore Crawlers out, he wants to have some static defenses here, obviously they're going to be required, there it is, now arriving with an Overseer, several of those Infestors just doing a Fungal Growth and Infested Terrans and they'll be able to shoot down that Banshee, so very well defended there by the Maga, but he has a second one on his Natural Expo, which will force him to run back and forth with his Infestors, and obviously Infestors don't have infinite energy, so this might be troublesome for the Maga. Though apparently he has enough defenses, already landing Spore Crawlers on all of his bases, he's gonna keep it safe so he doesn't lose that many workers on his Mineral Lines, and we do see that Bratok is slowly uh, going back into his base, and seems like he realizes that um, this uh, Aras not going anywhere further, and he needs to expand, needs to evolve his game, probably to a three base play with his command center arriving now and landing on that, that's gonna be his third base. Now, uh, keep in mind this, this third base positioning here is very wide open, hard to defend against a big line of Zerg forces, as you might imagine. Uh, Bratok is aware of that, he's already transitioning into siege tanks, he's probably gonna establish some nice uh, uh, defensive positions here, so he can defend the place. But um, what I'm looking is that the Maga is just working fine out of his three bases, he's trying to saturate his third, with a lot of drones going on there, and now getting an Hydralisk then, so interesting build here, it's gonna be something like Infester Hydralisk Zergling, something that you don't see every day, let's see the results against the Terran player. Indeed, this is why this is why we love Dimaga and indeed Bratok because he will fight to death and possibly win <laughs> against this very unorthodox yeah. opening. But still, you have to say that Dimaga came out ahead of that early game exchange because those six Hellions they did. Uh, almost no True. damage and no economic damage and the Banshee did very little such uh, there's only one uh, uh, actually there's 14 workers killed for Bratok so there is some economic damage but still it's uh, it's a slight uh, harvester lead for Dimaga and only now is Bratok getting back I'd say that Dimaga is now constructing an Ultralisk Dan and has researched Neuro Parasite as well as constructed that Hydralisk Dan as you mentioned is uh, in uh, if not a commanding then at least a very good positioning and now he's gearing up to take a third expansion and a fourth base mm -hmm. this is crazy but I like it it's good crazy. yeah well he's already on Hive Tech so we try to tech up really fast and he's going for Ultralisks it's not one of the most beloved units from the Zerg player as you know people complain about them being too weak, but uh, seems like the Maga has a plan here to counter Bratok. Not ex exactly sure what. What I do know is that he has a lot of anti air units at the moment. Infestors with Hydralists and Zerglings are a very solid. Uh, 
composition against air units, but uh, he needs to be aware of the fact that uh, all of them are quite fragile. So he needs to be careful here, depends on the unit composition he's going to go for. I'm assuming that those Ultralisks will be used on the front line as tanks to soak up the damage that the Hydralisks and the Infestors cannot he cannot afford them to take that damage or else they're going to be lost way too fast. And meanwhile, we do see Bratok just landing with two, two drops at the same time. One on the main base, another one on the natural extra. A multi-pronged assault, trying to focus fire on that mineral line and the buildings around it. But now with the investor showing up and fungal growth, this is not going to be good. But at the same time, we see Bratok advancing into the what's the fourth base from the Maga and he has quite a solid uh, unit composition here fairly standard for Terran a lot of Marines backed up by a lot of siege tanks and they're just slowly blasting away at what was supposed to be the fourth base from the Maga but doesn't seem like it's going to last long huh Sebastian what do you think? Well as you said Hydra this is uh, a fairly standard approach for a Terran player now taking down the uh, fourth base of the Naga, destroying it before it had uh, a, the possibility to give any economic reward to the Maga. Uh, whereas we see a very unorthodox unit composition here from our Zerg player, and now he's clashing. Hellions getting burnt and uh, roasted before doing any damage. Infested Terrans, Fungal Growth, and Odalisks all over the place, but the units are too few. Sure, it's nice and dandy, but you have to have the meat in there, and those siege tanks just ripping apart what was too few of everything. Idolist Surglings, Ultras, Infestors, not enough to really deal the damage. And this is what I feel. Dimag has clearly prepared something extraordinary for Dreamhack. He wanted to be able to throw uh, something unexpected against his opponents. And uh, to a lesser opponent, this would have uh, thrown them completely mm -hmm. off. But Bratok just takes it cool, takes a fourth base, by the way, a planetary fortress, and uh, simply counters it with the correct response. I feel that Demaga might have gone for too much lip gloss and too little substance <laughs> with his build. Well, I'm not sure exactly. I do know that part of his plan was having a fourth base. He knows that he needs the economy so he can keep putting out Ultralisks. They're quite expensive and it's not easy to just have an economy solid enough to put out as many Ultralisks as he need out of three bases. That's why he wanted his fourth. Meanwhile, here on Bratok side, he went for a very good decision. Planetary Fortress on this very open area, very hard to defend so the fortress will be able to defend itself when he decides to make a solid push and we can see on the main base from Bratok that he's going very heavy on the bio play he's getting even more racks so soon enough he's going to be playing out of what five six seven eight nine racks which is really heavy and at the same time we have a push from the Maga going straight into that main line of uh, defense from Bratok with a lot of those um, ultralists trying to slice down the bio forces from Bratov, they already chewed through the siege tanks, but now they're going to meet up with the planetary fortress, bio forces, and siege tanks, and this is not going to be good. These ultralists are solid units, yes, but not as good to resist this kind of uh, army composition by Bratok and the amount of quantity. I'm just taking a look at the units now, and it's 44 marines, five siege tanks, and three marauders backed up by four medivacs. It's a lot facing only three Ultralisks and now we have uh, the Maga just desperately trying to get more and more Zerglings out to get the proper surround on these Marines but this is going to take a little while and Bratok has what it takes to push right away with the Maga not having any proper defenses. Indeed, uh, the Maga uh, did a very poor decision there in deciding to attack an entrenched Terran against a planetary fortress. Of course he might not have been aware that he had already expanded there but Going back to what you said earlier, Dimaga needed a fourth base and now he's planting yep, another yep. one even though it's anything but secure in order to pull off this build. But how did he ever expect to hold a fourth base uh, that early in the game against a Terran who uh, hasn't been attacked, hasn't been harassed, hasn't been put on the defensive? I, I don't know. It seems, uh, well, Russian crazy, Ukrainian <laughs> crazy to be exact. And uh, these investors they could have thrown some very, very harmful uh, fungal growth on the marines earlier, like we saw just now, uh, when the Ultralis managed to slaughter them before they got up into the medevac, but uh, when he attacked that planetary fortress and all the uh, marines with it, his infestors were not with them, and uh, now he's getting a few nice kills here, but uh, that might be too little too late. I'm fearing for the Maga, Hydra. Well, um, you can see on the supply count is still fairly close. If we take a look at the armies, 31 marines, 4 siege tanks, 6 marauders against 
three ultras and 71 zerglings, also the three queens and the two infestors. But uh, seems like that for now, the big issue with the Maga is that he's falling behind on the economy game. I mean, the zerg player to me seems like it's Bratok. Look at him, he keeps expanding like a freak. He's already yeah. grabbing another a fifth base and getting a planetary fortress there. And we just had the Maga establishing his fourth hatchery just now. So this is going to translate into a big hit on his economy. If you take a look, we have Bratok rounding a about like what 2300 something like that even more every time you get mules landed down while the mag is trying to reach 2000 though the harvester's count is very similar this is a sign obviously that the main bases from the mag are getting exhausted there's no more minerals there but he hasn't been picking up as much of the map as he should as a zerg player rule of thumb for zerg players keep ahead on the base count you need to have that economy to keep replenishing your army and uh, doesn't seem that like that's the case for the mag on this specific match no, Bratok knows that rule too, and he uh, simply knows that the best way to counter an out-expanding Zerg is to out-expand him yourself and then force him to attack into your superiorly defended positions with planetary fortresses or uh, simply expand to too many locations that cannot possibly be held. So right now Bratok is truly commanding this match. He is the one that decides where the battle will ensue and uh, it seems like uh, we're getting close to that just now. One ultra is going ahead, a million Zerglings and now they're bravely retreating because that was a bad idea. And we have three free Terran infantry and uh, one armor, uh, one weapons upgrade on the vehicles and uh, just to, for good measures upgrading ship weapons as well should they come in uh, broodlords from the skies. Uh, Bratok is playing beautifully. Yeah, he's being very effective. Seems like he might be planning ahead to reinforce his air army. He's landing a couple of starports on the back of his base. But uh, the upgrades, it was what I wanted to comment. I mean, we have the 3-3 bio ball here, backed up by those siege tanks, against the 5-3 ultralists, if I'm not mistaken, and 3-3 zerglings. And we do see here the Maga again, trying to throw all of his units against this huge Terran force, but uh, it's just not enough, and he cannot leave these infestors on the front line. That last ditch effort by the Maga doesn't seem to be enough. Though he's attempting to expand all the way up north, he got intercepted, but Bratok just landing there, focusing the fire on that hatchery and trying to destroy it before the Maga is able to stabilize the economy and now going for the second one. So the Maga making a desperate attempt to expand fast here. So he had a way of getting a lot of units produced quite fast and also pay for those big expensive ultra lists. But um, doesn't seem like he's gonna be lucky. We do have Bratok again advancing to the middle of the map. He's reaching the creep now and seems like he has what it takes to replenish his army faster than the Maga. Indeed, and uh, uh, Dimaga simply starred himself, now another battle going down, and it seems like the Zerg will this time actually take down those uh, uh, Terran forces that were uh, left uh, on their own, so to speak, but uh, at the same time, uh, the fourth base of Dimaga is uh, being decimated here by uh, the drop forces from uh, Bratok. But Dimaga starred himself uh, on this expensive build. He had so many units that required so much resources and he simply couldn't hold the necessary expansions. And now we see his last remaining forces slowly dwindle and there comes a GG. Yeah, well, um, I think his plan was based on the fact that he would be able to grab four bases fairly quick and just put out units out of four bases. And the, the moment that uh, he wasn't able to secure that fourth base, Bratok was just ahead and had the game on his hand. Uh, though the Maga tried to recover that fourth base and he did so later on, it might be too late because Bratok didn't stop on two or three bases. He kept expanding more and more and got to the point where he's playing out of five bases, trying to get that economy rolling with the mules for the Terran player is even able to boost it just occasionally to get more and more units out and well the final result is just this massive destruction that we witness here on the MAGA side. The MAGA didn't have what it takes and those ultralisks didn't prove as the useful unit as the key unit to counter the unit composition from Bratok. So um, I guess that this series is over with 2-0 in favor of Bratok. Um, I'm a bit sad for the Mag, I really like him, but he didn't have what he take. Bratok was just a solid Terran here and completely crushed him and also kept the pressure of the whole game as you witnessed, Sebastian. He kept making medivac drops, harassing on the bases, and uh, that had its toll on the Maga. It was a superior win by Bratok, but at the same time, the Maga were 
uh, so crazy that he uh, uh, knew that he was taking a huge risk uh, with uh, both these mm -hmm. games. He could have played a more orthodox style and maybe had a, more of a fighting chance, but he put it all on one card and it didn't pay yeah. off. It was uh, crazy good, but too crazy. Well, game is done, series is done. I'm going to check uh, other series from DreamHack, probably from some other events that have been going on as well. going to pick some interesting ones. Hope you guys enjoyed this series. See you all later.